Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.8.0i is now on the PTU. It is still in its first wave of PTU, so it's subscribers and concierge and Evocardi that will have access at the moment. But I do expect it to go to wider PTU within hours, adding more people. That would be my expectation. They're certainly going to want more and more people to stress test the servers before they go live. And CIG are planning to have a live release of 3.8 before they go on Christmas and New Year's holiday. So that's expected to be actually this weekend. So potentially by the 21st of December. The testing focus for this patch has um, sort of like expanded slightly, or at least um, they focused more on exactly what they want to test. So we've got general gameplay and traversal, micro tech and updated rest stops, new look ahead and third person camera updates, patrol, bounty and mining claim missions, the hijacked 890 jump mission, mining and mining laser head attachments and ship components. We've got some updates in this patch as well. They've updated inventory at several shops to increase variety. So expect there to be probably a little bit more of a economy balance with 3.8 live as well than you're used to. And we'll have to wait and see exactly how they move stuff around um, for that live build. There's been some rebalancing to patrol missions. The Arlington gang mission rewards have also been updated. That is the mission chain of six missions currently that will potentially eventually lead to uh, an Idris mission in the future. Um, so like the seventh part of this six part mission, if you see what I mean, the seventh part that's not currently there is uh, in the sort of like data mining leaks um, of an Idris, um, which you're supposed to fight potentially with a large group or the server or whatever. But we'll have to wait and see when that actually gets added because that is not currently in game. They've added additional points to fix various navigation issues for AI enemies moving around the 890 jump, which is good because the AI around there were very derpy. There's been further polish on melee combat sound effects. They've updated the 890 jump mission rewards and timers for accepting it. They've added an abandoned cargo location light, so like a little blinking cargo light. Um, for cargo that's ejected from destroyed ships. There's a good amount of fixes in this patch too. The player should no longer suffocate when in the pilot seat of the Terrapin without a helmet. There should no longer be replaced me textures outside of the Constellation Phoenix. Flight suits and armor should no longer be missing from kiosks and mannequins at rest stop shops. Commodities purchased should now appear on the ship's cargo hold, or in the, the cargo hold. Hangar decorations should once again be placeable in all hangars. The Rari building at Deacon's Outpost should no longer be floating. There should now be audio for getting into and out of the Herald support seat. They fixed bed lock out not working on some ships. The player should no longer rotate around when attempting to use the fine kiosk, which means you can actually use the fine kiosk. The dashboard interactions on the Valkyrie should no longer be reversed. Switching FPS weapons should no longer cause them to occasionally drop and be lost. The dissolve VFX for extracting rocks should now play properly. The player's status UI should no longer appear offset. Players should no longer randomly suffocate and die elsewhere. The 890 jump should once again have interior audio sounds. The EMP on the Sentinel should once again be operational. They fixed missing landing dust on the Prospector and an issue with offset planetary service markers on the Star Map. They fixed an issue on some weapons where equipping an optic would cause the aim down sights. Um, to be held too high, basically. Respawning within 50 meters of another player should no longer cause proximity VoIP to not work between them. Party AI markers should now show up consistently. Players should no longer randomly get ejected into EVA when in quantum travel, and they fixed three client crashes and six server crashes, as well as a server deadlock. There are a few known issues that they are trying to solve as well with 3.8 on the PTU currently. Players are unable to land in Hangar 2 at Lawville. The Lancet mining laser will fire straight down when equipped to the Prospector. If the quantum travel marker is at the edge of a moon or planet, then you can actually sort of like travel through the moon or planet and explode rather than going around. So it's not using the quantum splines properly. Barley launch is currently not functioning. The buttons on the fine and citation kiosks can frequently not respond to player interaction. There's a chance the enemy AI in the hijacked 890 will not react to the player. That is one of the problems I was having with the mission. Uh, personal transport beacons do not broadcast. The Vanguard Sentinel is incorrectly named Harbinger on the ASOP terminals and comms channels. Uh, carryable mission items can fall through the floor. Carryable boxes may also fall through the floor. This is not great. Players may experience stalls in performance shortly after loading into Starmering and firing weapons. NBC beacon notifications will sometimes display an incorrect distance. 
AI ships can often get stuck in the middle of their motion and will not advance further. AI markers for enemy can sometimes be seen through the walls in Star Marine as well. So the FPS weapons are still being dropped occasionally when you switch weapon, and that's certainly not been fixed. It's, uh, hopefully they will get that solved soon. Um, also, weapons sometimes lock up when I'm trying to fire them in FPS combat, meaning I can't shoot my weapon until I've swapped it with another weapon or um, actually gone to my personal manager app and swapped weapons entirely. Really, really annoying. Um, servers are getting various um, crashes at the moment, so the 30k disconnects at least more regularly in the last few hours I've been seeing that. Assumedly, that's from stress testing. There does seem to be occasional hitches and CPU spikes as well, and I'm assuming that is a bug with server-side object container streaming. It's a bit weird because overall, frame rates are much higher, and um, the stalls seem to be seemingly random uh, occasionally. But um, again, I hope that's just something that they can fix relatively easily. Boxes and physics grids have an annoying amount of problems at the moment, though I know that's a focus for them to fix, and they're obviously going to be fixing all those um, listed known issues where possible, but having boxes fall through the floor and having cargo grids not work properly, that is annoying. The overall feeling of 3.8 though on the PTU is actually pretty good. The sort of like additions with the um, server-side object container streaming, new cameras and planetary tech all sort of like bring uh, the game to the next level. Um, combat feels a lot better, a lot more balanced as well, or at least a PvE um, ship to ship combat feels good for me. There's certainly a good few bugs though, and some of them that I've plagued me since I can remember have actually been solved now, but still more needs to be done. Exploring the new planets and moons is something I'm very much looking forward to doing over the next few weeks because of the new planetary deck. They've all changed and improved. Um, ship AI act much more appropriately and actually engage you, at least when I've been playing. Um, I'm sure that there's some of the listed known issues are um, that the AI have trouble sometimes, but they are much better than they were previously. Missions are more difficult, or at least there are more difficult missions available, although some of the ones that are supposed to be multiplayer, that you can still run them solo. Um, if you've got the right ship, you can certainly run them solo. Like Super Hornet's pretty good at running a lot of these missions. I'm hoping that this becomes less viable running missions solo, and they increase rewards and give us some really hard missions. Or some, maybe some missions where um, the DPS of the ships is so high that you have to bring a hammerhead or a constellation or something that's not just a fighter. FPS AI still needs work, as they are mega derps. I mean, you sort of like, they can still take you out if you're not careful, or you're really unlucky, or you walk around a corner and haven't loaded your gun or something, but um, they don't react very quickly and they don't use cover. I only had problems when my weapons didn't fire um, with these sort of um, FPS AI. And I do want to be challenged uh, in missions and combat and, and that sort of stuff. I'd like to see more cargo spawn from destroyed ships and that stay there a bit longer as well. I'm sort of waiting for them to fix the current listed bugs and then go to wider PTU and then get more people in the game um, so that I can stress test and do more stuff in more full servers and get the Argo Mole in for testing as well. Get the Argo Mole in. I want to play with it. Um, that's very much something I want to do. But yeah. I'm interested in what people think. Have you been playing the 3.8 PTU? What do you think? Have you had loads of problems with it? Do you think it's amazing? What do you think of the new planets? Are you impressed? Do you think they should have made more progress? Do you like what server-side object container streaming seems to be doing? Are you too confused to really understand what's going on with server-side object container streaming? You're like, but I don't understand really what it does. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. It does help sort of guide what videos I do next, especially when there's a lot of content potentially available to do. Every month we have a Star Citizenship giveaway for December, and to celebrate 2019, we are giving away a Carrick, the Mighty Explorer ship. It does also come with that Pisces and the Urza Rover 2. To be in for a chance of winning that, all you need to do is comment on any of my videos made during this month of December. Only one of your comments counts per video. Full details down below. A quick bit of shilling as well. Shadow provide remote access to high spec gaming PCs as a subscription service so you don't need to maintain your own gaming PC. You can leverage the power of your internet to turn your phone, tablet, laptop or home PC into a monster. They are taking pre-orders for their new hardware configurations, scaling for 4K gaming, up to 32 gigs of RAM and a GeForce Titan RTX which I am very much looking forward to playing Star Citizen on. Links below and use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. There is also an additional offer if you are in the US as well that you get basically 50% off. And you can even use my BoardGamer code on top of that as well for additional discount. Ah.
I also use NordVPN, which I've decided to continue to support as they appear to have one of the best VPN services currently available at an affordable price. If you're looking for a VPN, consider them. Links below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you would like to share my video, comment, uh, subscribe, like, all that sort of jazz, ring the bell. That all helps content creators. Also, if you want to further support the channel even more, there's Patreon, there's direct donation, there's the YouTube join button as well, which gives you access to some more sort of like exclusive content from me. Thank you very much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.